All right, so we've arrived in Suda now. Uh, if you paid some attention to the earlier events in the game, you would have noticed that uh, there were a few references to this town. One of which was that this was the location of a battle which occurred a number of years earlier. Decker had referenced it when he was in his nightmare. It's also a place that that uh, Bridget, or Aaron, or whatever we want to call her, said that she was going to head down to to check for survivors. Because the uh, the soldiers couldn't really support the uh, supply the manpower necessarily necessary to go and investigate this on their own. Seems as though the town is abandoned, however. Oh, still going by the name Aaron. I did no such thing. Not, not such thing. God, what the hell's wrong with me? That's my this guy or a sick moment. All right, so <laughs> picked up. Uh, well, let me save. I want to show you something. So, like, uh, there are a few examples in this game where I had slightly branching pathways. Now, it wasn't like dialogue choices that you made, which changed the outcome of the story or anything like that. Just minor things, like if you had spoken to a certain person or done a certain thing, characters might react to you in a certain way. So the character of Bridget or Aaron in there had a change in the way that she would react to you here if you had spoken to her while you were in the nightmare. If you just never stumbled across there, neither you wouldn't know each other when you got to this town. Just ignore the fact that it's bright out. That's just a bug in the gameplay, considering the way I restarted. It's supposed to be dark. And it would be had I started the game like normal. Just going to play out the alternate dialogue here.
So overall, it progresses the same way. You're going to have the same conversation and you're going to end up in the same place. But the conversation plays out very differently because the two haven't actually met. So Bridget or Aaron or whatever has gone to this big house here because she says there is a shelter in the basement. But we weren't able to get through it before because it's locked. Oh, her character portrait stayed. So we've had both groups of characters run into Aaron or Bridget. And that's something that I've done since just to kind of show the relative proximity of the two groups of characters. Now, they're not meeting each other. They tend to just miss each other by a little bit. But it is clear that they are tra they're traveling their own paths, but they're not that far away from each other. Because here we are that night, basically, after the Morty did its thing and they were rescued. And uh, Aaron or Bridget managed to make her way here. But a couple of days earlier, she was at the fort. She was there and she ran into Ansel at the time. So this character is around. And I wanted to go and introduce her earlier on in the story and then have her pop up several times because she is supposed to be a somewhat important character in the group although she's not a combat oriented character so she's never going to join the party in any fights she's just not a fighter
Oh, they should be following him. <laughs> so this is a shelter that they built in order to flee to if they were ever attacked again. When the storm started, they fled down here, but it wasn't made to be, you know, hurricane proof. So there's a lot of water has found its way down here. Ha, ah, they reappeared. Okay, so she ran off, leaving Ambrose here to face the music. That was one. And of course the fights are not balanced, so this will be a cakewalk. This is deeper in the shelter. Kismet was in fact down here.
Oh. I guess the game crashed. <laughs> uh, that was going to be the end of the episode anyway.